One question that I got a few times is about the chapter in Predictably Rational on free. So if you remember, in that chapter, we basically compared two situations. Situation one, a lint truffle is being sold for 14 cents, and the Hershey kiss is being sold by one penny. 14 cents, one penny. And what most people do in this case is they pick the more expensive truffle for 14 cents. Then we discount both chocolates by one penny. So instead of 14 and 1, it is 13 and 0. And now what happens is that the vast majority, almost everybody, picks the free chocolate. And this is a violation of rationality because it means that the difference in price, the 13 cents difference in price, looks very different when it's positive prices, 14 and 1, and when one of them is at 0. In both cases, you should consider what's the quality of the chocolate I'm getting in both cases, what's the difference in price. So these are the results, and uh, I interpret them as being an overexcitement over free, which seems to be the case. Uh, but, but two questions that I got were quite interesting. One of them said, maybe the right model to use is not a subtraction model, but the moment you, uh, that you discount the price to 13 and 0, the value of the Hershey case is infinite, because it's whatever the value divided, divided by 0. Uh, now, this is an interesting model that the way we decide about value is dividing by price, not, not subtracting price from it, not subtracting um, cost from benefit by dividing. It's not a rational model for sure, but it's, it's a possible model. But actually what we find is that when we decrease the price of the Hershey kiss from two pennies to one to zero, there's basically no difference when we reduce the price from two to one and a huge difference in the reduction from 1 to 0. So this model that says that we take the benefit and divide by cost rather than subtract doesn't seem to account for some of the results. It's possible that it's part of the input for decision making, but it doesn't seem to explain the results. The second thing I got a few comments about was the Amazon gift certificate experiment. So in the same way that we sold the two chocolates, we also sold gift certificates. So imagine you have a $20 gift certificate for $13 and a $10 gift certificate for, <clears throat> for $1. You know, which one would you get? It? A, a $20 gift certificate, sorry, a $20 gift certificate for $7 or a $10 gift certificate for $1. And in that case, what happened is the vast majority of people buy the $20 gift certificate. But again, if we discount both, pri both gift certificates, instead of 13 and 1 to 12 and 0, all of a sudden everybody buys the 0. Now, here's the thing. When you just look at one of the conditions, when you look at the choice people had between a gift certificate for $20 that they would pay $12 for, or a gift certificate for $10 they would pay 0 for, it's hard to tell which one is rational. Because you could say, what if Amazon doesn't respect them? What are the conditions? The point is that you have to consider not only that condition, not only the choice between a $10 certificate and a $20 certificate, but what happened in the, this choice when the prices are both positive to the prices when someone is, one of them is free. In the same way, in the chocolate case, you can't just compare, look at one condition and deduce from it what's rational or irrational. You need both conditions. And you need to show that in the condition where both prices are positive, people love the $20 gift certificates. But when you discount them both by $1, all of a sudden they love something else. And it's this change in what's desirable that we interpret as being irrational. That a $1 change shifts behavior so much, this is what doesn't make sense from a rational perspective.